Hello, happy Sunday. I wanted to read a devotional because we haven't done devotionals for a while. These are from the calendars that I keep on the kitchen table in hopes that my children will read them when they eat breakfast. True beauty is on the inside. That's a pretty one today. Um, how weird that I said that. True beauty is on the inside. And I'm like, that's a pretty one today. Anyway. Um, prayers and blessings. May you see the just because messages from God in your day. A timely word, a kindness, a warm smile, a favor, or anything that just, that brings joy into your life. May your heart receive all that the Lord has to give. He wants the very best for you. And that's just what he will provide. And then, I thought I would read one from here. Because we almost never do this, but this book's new, so. We got new plants today. Let me show you my plants real quick. got this beautiful plant it kind of is curled up right here or unfurling and then this plant plants have really been on my mind the last couple of days so I really um, one of my old pastors not old one of my pastors said this just bloom thing the other day that I really liked and then someone else said um, grown goodness, which I really liked. And I've just been thinking about plants and like new birth and stuff. We don't have any plants in the house currently. Normally I have plants, but I have a horrible, like I do not have a green thumb. So I kill them frequently. And the last time I had killed all the plants, we never repurchased. So my daughter was commenting when I, when I wanted to buy new plants, she was like, well, you're just gonna kill them <laughs> again. Cause I cannot keep plants alive, but my son can and my daughter can, like they're better at it. But I explained to her, I'm like, just because I don't have a natural green thumb doesn't mean I have to suffer with never having plants in the house. Like I still get to own plants and try again and try again and keep learning how to keep plants alive. Eventually I'll figure it out. Um, I'm convinced I have the skill to, you know, the ability to learn how to keep a plant alive, but I shouldn't have to suffer and not have any plants. And so she agreed. She was like, yeah, no, that's true. You, you, you get to have plants even though you tend to kill them. You shouldn't have to not ever have any. So <laughs> those are our three new ones. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping I can grow them, keep them alive. I do have new soil and a bunch of pots and stuff in the garage from all my other times I've tried to have plants, but so I won't repot them right away because I'll try to get the watering situation down and I'm putting them in the sunlight. I wanted to also get a grow light, which could be part of the problem. I might need a grow light, a grow lamp. But anyway, my neighbor let me borrow his grow lamp last summer for a little bit, but that was because I was trying to grow plants from seed. Still didn't work. I'm not, it wasn't ideal. But anyway, I also got these two rocks. I don't know what kind they are. They're not agates. My favorite are agates. I got um, a whole bunch of agates from, again, my same neighbor again. And then I gave them all away to one of my pastors. And then I was out of agates. And then I got a whole bunch more. And they were bigger, more expensive, like agates the second time around and I had a like a few and I gave all those to my sister just now for Christmas so now I have no agates again and agates are my very favorite but so while we were at the plant store I saw these agate cards so I'm super excited to have agate cards which are not as good as regular agates but um 
now the kids and I can play cards and then we can learn about all the different types of agates while we play cards. Isn't that gonna be so fun? I'm really excited to like refresh, you know, our, I can't even remember, what is it? There's the poker, I can't remember the name of the poker. I'm not really good with poker. I don't really have a good poker face because you can always tell if I have a good hand or not, but um, anyway, so the kids should know how to play. Everyone should know how to play poker and stuff. So we'll refresh our like um, card skills and game playing and all of that. And then we'll use, we'll learn about agates. Anyway, that's totally side point. All right, devotional. This is not the one for today's date, but I don't want to necessarily go in order for this book. And I might want to just read it from the beginning to the end. Um, God looks for clay. House of Israel, can I not treat you as this potter treats his clay? This is the Lord's declaration. Just like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. That's in Jeremiah 18.6. God knows how to bring salvation to your family, your friends, your community, and your world. Accordingly, he looks for those who will allow him to shape them into the instruments he requires to do his divine work. Clay has no plans of its own, no aspirations for service, nor reluctance to perform its given task. It is just clay, moldable, pliable, totally submissive to the will of its master. At times we excitedly announce to God, I've discovered my strengths and gifts, and now I know how I can best serve you. At other times, we inform him, I am aware of what my weaknesses are, so I know which tasks I'm not capable of doing for you. Yet this is not characteristic of clay. God is not limited to working with our strengths. He can mold us into whatever kind of instrument he requires. When God's assignment demands humility, he finds a servant willing to be humbled. When his work requires zeal, he looks for someone he can fill with his spirit. God uses holy vessels, so he finds those who will allow him to remove their impurities. It is not a noble task being clay. There is no glamour to it, nothing boastworthy, except that it is exactly what Almighty God is looking for compliance, moldable, yielded clay. If your tendency is to tell the Father what you can and cannot do for him, submit to his agenda and allow him to shape you into the person he wants you to be. Like clay. That's a good one. I love it every time there's stuff about clay in the Bible. I like that one for today. I hadn't read it before. Is it? We checked out the new church today for the second time. My daughter took communion there the first time we went two weeks ago on day one, which was amazing. That's the first time she's ever taken communion by herself, willingly. I talked about it. I think on one of these videos, I think on my live, I talked about it, but that's just huge. And then um, today he talked about doing stuff to help the poor. I really liked that. I really like hearing that from the pulpits. Bad experiences in the past where I've tried to help the poor at a church and that didn't fly. It didn't go well. It didn't ever happen. There was a lot of felt like a lot of resistance people wouldn't even answer yes or no would they help there was just people ignoring and what was hard about it is that the people who were ignoring and not responding and not answering and wouldn't say yes or no to helping the poor were people who were so rich they were so wealthy I've been in say these two couples houses and they're so rich 
They're wealthy, wealthy, wealthy people who do not struggle with money. And they couldn't be bothered to even answer no thanks. They're not willing to help out. Or yes, sure, we will help out. Like nothing. It's, it blew my mind how hard it was to get people to say yes to helping the poor. But at this new church, the pastor himself is talks about it from the pulpit like it's normal to help the poor, help the incarcerated, help the people on the street. Like I love that. I love hearing that from the pulpit. And my daughter too. Like that's a big thing for our family. That's a big thing for me and my kids. Um, and so I like that my daughter could hear that too from the pulpit. Um which is better than hearing from the pulpit, oh, it's not works righteousness. And, and you, you know, people understand that. People get that, I think. Um, it's not what you do, it's not what you do, it's not works righteousness, which is true. And yet, also, it's awesome to hear from the pulpit. Help somebody. <laughs> Help the poor, help the incarcerated, listen to them, learn from them, help them. Um, it's surprising how little you hear that from a pastor. So I really, I just really, really like this guy. You know, I feel like it's a good fit, this church for my kid, which makes it a good fit for me. Um, so we'll see. Technically, we do still serve now I, now I feel like I have three churches. <sighs> I don't know. I can't go to three churches. I'll watch three every week. I'll now I'll watch three churches. Currently we're serving at one of the churches every other Sunday. That might have to stop or change to Saturday. Currently I haven't been to one of my other churches for a while. It's working on a month at this point. Um, and I don't know if maybe I need to keep going there or not. I'm feeling like it's not the right place. I could just watch online. And then this new one, I like it. There's nothing wrong with it that I can tell. And I think my daughter likes it. I think it'll be good for her and her friend. So now it's more like, because I have trouble letting go, like, I suppose it's not normal to have three churches. But it, feel, it would feel weird to have just one church. So I don't really know what to do at this point, what to do with my life about the church situation. I did sign up for a group today at the third church. Or a class. There were four things. I took three cards for three of the things, and then I did have to sign up for one of them because they didn't have any cards to take. So I think that one was spiritual gifts. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, so that is that. Hope you have an awesome day. And... I took, oh, my little prism thing hanging on the window was shining. Oh, can you see? Oh, you can see it. Can you see right here? The little ra rainbow. And then, is it behind me too? There's one there. I took a picture of um, that wall because it's got all these rainbow. Can you see? Like, anyway, um, it's got all these like little prisms on it. That's how I think about God. God's like love and light. So God is God. So God's like the sun. We'll just, I'm pretending. No one has to get all worried about my language here. But um, I, I, I feel like I'm like gun shy. The Christians are some of the most uptight people you'll have ever meet. They will complain about anything you say wrong. Like they just are, can be some of the least loving people in the world. It's horrible. I should say some Christians. But anyway, but it's like, so then I've got the prism thing, the glass kind of, you know, diamond looking ball prism thing on the hanging from the window and then it radiates out the reflections you know the light and so it makes these like prisms on the rainbows on the wall and so then I think of that as like this that would be like us 
right? Like reflecting God's lights. Or would the prism be like us? I don't actually overthink it. Let's think about this. If God is the sun and then the prism is on the window, we would be like the prism thing on the window. And then we would be reflecting out the light and that would be like through us coming out these things. That's how I think about it. But anyway, uh, it's hard to explain. <laughs> I'm so unarticulate. I'm like the least articulate person ever. But um. anyway, hope you have a great day. Bye.